Hi, in this short video, I'm gonna be guiding you through all the basics to creating that perfect block paved driveway. For this particular project, we've selected the Bradstone Monksbridge blocks in the Croft Multicolor option. Along the way, I'll show you which tools to use, what materials you'll need, and I'll take you through the whole process one step at a time. When we get to the end of the video, I'll repeat the five key points that help ensure you create a great looking driveway you can be proud of. So make sure you have a pen and paper handy. Before you start your project, ensure you're aware of and follow the planning and water drainage regulations which relate to driveways and residential properties in England and Wales. For more information, visit our website. Right then, so let's get to work. The first physical task in laying your driveway is excavation. To work out the depth to dig down to, certain things need to be taken into account. Most block paving is 50 mm thick and you'll need a laying course of sand that's around 40 mm thick, plus a sub-base that is somewhere around 100 to 150 mm thick. All this needs to be at least 150 mm below the damp proof course of the house, so overall you need to dig down to a level that's roughly 350 to 400 mm below the damp proof course. You must also remember to include a slope or fall to ensure adequate drainage. For block paving on residential driveways, you normally need a fall of not less than 1 in 60, which means 1 cm of fall for every 60 cm of distance. Ideally, this slope should run away from the house. In our project, the drive slopes back towards the house, so we're installing a linear drainage channel to intercept the surface water before it gets to the house or garage. At the end of the excavation, you should have a good, clean level area and will be able to press on with the next task, the edge restraints. Edge restraints hold a block paved driveway in place. They keep everything together and make the driveway strong enough to take the weight of cars and vans, so it's essential that they're constructed properly. Where you have existing walls, they can provide the restraint but you should still lay a block as an edge course so that the whole driveway looks the same. This also applies if you're using a kerb. Always lay a kerb and edge course block for consistency. The concrete we're using for the edges is a 6 to 1 mix, so that's 6 parts all in one ballast to 1 part cement. You need to set up a taut string line to act as a guide to both the alignment and the level of the kerbs and blocks being laid as the edge restraints. This string line needs to be set at the finished level of the paving. Spread out a base of concrete so that it's about 25 mm down from the line. Place the kerb onto the concrete and then, with a series of gentle but firm taps, tap it down to the correct level, just touching the string line. As you keep laying the kerbs and edge blocks, use a long spirit level or a straight edge timber to check that they are even over the tops with no high spots or hollows. Okay, we've got now a good line of edge restraint blocks laid and we're happy with the alignment and level. So next, we need to haunch them, sometimes known as backing up. This simply involves laying more concrete to the outside edge of the block, staying 25 millimeters from the top to hold them in place and prevent them from moving sideways when we lay the rest of the paving. Once you've laid the edge restraints, leave them overnight to harden, being careful not to knock or disturb them. The sub-base has to follow the same falls and levels as the final paving and will need to be 80mm to 100mm below the line. Rake it level first, then compact it to ensure the levels are accurate. It will take at least 8 passes to fully compact the stone. This is a vital stage of the construction. The better the sub-base is compacted, the less likely it is the driveway will settle in years to come. It's much better to spend an extra 20 minutes or so now getting it right. Once you're happy with the sub-base, you can move on to the real fun, laying the blocks. Lay the blocks onto a bed of sharp, gritty sand. It's important that the sand is the right type. Soft sands used for mortars can be squeezed up through the joints between blocks and cause low spots to form. The sand also needs to be slightly damp to help it compact properly and stop blowing away. It's best to lay the sand in stages to give you enough time to lay the blocks before the sand dries out. Rough out the sand so it's halfway up the blocks of the edge course. Then partially compact the sand with one single pass of the vibrating plate. 
Now we come to the screeding or the scraping off of the excess sand to create a smooth and even bed onto which we can place the blocks. There are a couple of ways of doing this. You could use the edge blocks as a level guide, cut a notch in a timber board and then scrape off the excess sand. Or you could set screed rails into the sand bed so that they are at the level you want the base of the blocks to be and then use the timber board to scrape off the excess sand. You need a smooth and even sand bed that will leave the blocks 5 or 6 mm round when you lay them. Remember, if the screeded bed is uneven, the blocks will be uneven. So it's vital you make sure it's level. So now you're ready to start laying your blocks. To start your laying, it's always best to choose a baseline, an edge or an imaginary line that is parallel or square to the house that will act as an alignment guide. Make sure you don't stand on the carefully screeded bed we've just prepared. So think about where to place blocks while they're waiting to be laid and work out how you're going to get those first few tricky courses laid. So first course goes down with each block being laid hand tight against the previous one. Check your levels and alignments every few courses and also keep an eye on your pattern to ensure you avoid having vertical joints so the blocks cross one another like ours. And now, as you can see, almost all the driveway is covered with blocks. The only gaps are where blocks need to be cut and that will be our next task. With a fairly simple layout such as this course pattern, the cutting in is relatively easy. When blocks are laid at angles or where there are arcs and curves, it can become a bit more tricky, but this is relatively straightforward and shouldn't take too long. There are three very different tools that are commonly used for cutting block pavers. A hammer and bolster chisel, a block splitter or a power saw. It's best to leave power saws to the professionals, so you should either use a bolster chisel and hammer or block splitter. Cutting in can seem like a bit of a slow job after the mad rush of block laying, but neat, accurate cutting in can make the difference between a really good looking job and one that's a bit of a disappointment. Take your time, don't expect every piece to fit perfectly, and soon you'll notice you're getting better and better, and before too long, you'll be fitting that very last piece. Now the driveway is almost finished, but there are three more tasks to carry out before it's ready to be used. First, give the drive a good sweep to clear away any of the building debris. Then it's time to fill the gaps with a kiln-dried jointing sand. Scatter the sand across the surface and use a soft brush to sweep it into the empty joints. Use plenty of sand and leave any excess sand on the surface ready for the compaction. So, on to the last task, the compaction of the blocks, hammering them down into the sand bed you carefully created earlier and shaking that kiln dried sand down into the joints to give a firm and stable block paved driveway. You'll see the sand sink into the joints as the machine passes over. Generally speaking, three or four passes will be enough to do the job. Now's the time to sweep up the surplus you left behind and use it to top up all the gaps to make sure that all the joints are filled to the top. And there you have it, the job is complete and as long as the concrete on the edge courses is hard you can drive onto the block paving straight away. If you think back to the beginning of this video you'll remember I said I'd go over all the essential points again so now's the time to get your pen and paper ready. First of all, now that you've got a clearer idea of how much work is involved, you may want to employ a professional to do the work. If that's what you want to do, then we recommend using an experienced and accredited member of the Bradstone Assured team. Secondly, if you are keen to do it yourself, then remember the key to success is in the preparation. Firm edge restraints laid on and haunched with concrete and a sound sub-base of top quality crushed stone. Thirdly, make sure your bedding sand is damp before you spread it to prepare your screeded bed. Finally, keep checking your alignment and levels. It's so easy for blocks to start drifting off course and it's very tricky to get everything back in line, so check regularly. Follow these simple guidelines and you can have a driveway to be proud of.